behind the wall of fears. We need deliverance from our ignorance. Cause the world, it hasn't changed in years. In the garden, we were started to know the difference from right and wrong. Absolutely wonderful, powerful Seabet Choir. Yeah. And they went from zero to outstanding in five hours. Not bad. Not bad. Great instructors. Thank you. Beverly, thank you. Leora, thank you. So, is Cindy Clay here? Well, I'm going to talk about you. Are you prepared? All right, good. Get. I would have never saw you over there. You always sit on this side. What's going on? Uh, okay, anyway. Ha! Ah. So, uh, it's a CBEC kind of a day. It's actually sort of a sweet sort of a day because um, CBEC was rich. It was heavenly. We actually had a theme one year that was... Uh, Heaven's Happening, or Heaven's Happening, or something like that. And um, it wasn't always that way. It actually took an intention. So I just want to talk about a, a little bit about the power of intention. Because it used to be that people would have a good experience, but not till the end. So perhaps for the first five to seven years that I've been going to see back as, as the minister of this community, it seemed like things would break down and then come back together. We'd even talk about it. Well, it's Wednesday. They should s 
start being put back together now uh, because people would have all these upsets and things. And, and it just, it, uh, it was rich, but I guess I outgrew growth through crisis. And therefore, crisis wasn't needed to grow. And we sort of switched things. And I remember thinking, I would really like, I would like the experience of Seebeck to be heavenly, like I would imagine heaven would be. And that would not be clouds and harps, because I wouldn't sign up for that. I mean, hell would be more exciting. Uh, <laughs> oh, maybe harps and clouds are hell. Oh. Anyway. We don't believe in either one of those. So what we believe in is it's all a state of mind and we're going to continue forever. So we will just build on our consciousness just in case you're new here. Uh, what do we believe? We do not believe that there's a place here and a place there that you are uh, assigned to. What we believe is that it's a state of consciousness and we will always be eternally growing in our consciousness, therefore always choosing a, a great experience or a not so great experience, no matter what, what incarnation we are in. That's what we believe. So that's the short, uh, did I get myself out of that swamp fairly quickly? <laughs> so <laughs> so back, back to the subject of choosing heaven. And I, re I remember one year it really was heavenly, and I knew that we had arrived in heaven, that, that it was the place that I would want to spend the rest of my life. That's what heaven is to me. Are you in a place that you could be there the rest of your life? And I knew that that had happened because we used to have dances on the tennis courts. I don't know what happened to those. Oh, I, I know that we were too loud and neighbors complained. But anyway, before that, <laughs> before the neighbors were complaining about our, our, loud, our loud dancing, we were having dances on the tennis courts and I saw Danny Ryan who was, 20 years ago, he was an out gay person. Maybe more than that, because we were still at the Northgate property. He was a very out gay person. Now, there's people who are out, and then there's people that are out! And 25 years ago, he was out! Do you understand? <laughs> Great. And then there was George Gregory, who was a very out straight person. <laughs> he was very straight with his straightness. People, Marilyn, are you up there? Wasn't that true? Okay. <laughs> Marilyn's laughing because she used to be married to him. <laughs> I just mean that. Don't, that's not funny. That's that she knows that I'm telling the truth. I'm checking in with an authority. He was a very much a man's man. And anyway, Danny Ryan decided to go over and ask George Gregory to dance. And George Gregory took his hand, and they danced. And all I could do was cry. Because I thought, you know, this is the kind of heaven I could spend the rest of my life with. And that's what Seebeck is to me. <laughs> and I've felt that every single year since. In different ways, I just see sweetness showing up. I see. I see Nartano teaching people how to fix their bicycles. I see uh, the teens coming up with a song out of nowhere. I, I just see so much interaction that is so loving and so inclusive and so com kind and compassionate. And there's also an essence and a quality to it that I can't quite put my fingers on. And yesterday I was thinking about it and I couldn't quite, I can't, it's an essence. It's, you see it, but you see the results of that essence. It's not this stuff happens and then the essence happens. It's this essence is creating this stuff happening. And so I have questioned since that date, since that time with George and Danny dancing, how is it that we could have that kind of life? How I could have that kind of life? How do we create that kind of life? 52 weeks out of the year instead of one. How do we do this over and over and over again? What is, what is it? And so what's going on at Seebeck that's not going on the rest of the time? You know, how, 
Because if you can name it, then you can recreate it. You can, you can work with it. And um, so I'm looking at CBAC, and I, even though it has gotten better every single year, I can honestly say it's not the food. What? Well, no, it's, it's better all the time, and I'm not complaining, it's just really good, but it's not food. And it's, maybe it's that people put it in front of you, that's good, and take it away. That's good, but that's not it. Um, it could be the scenery, but in the Northwest, we have great scenery everywhere, so it's not the scenery. It could be the weather, but we've been there in, in weeks that the weather wasn't that great. So it's not the weather. So it's not the scenery or the weather or the food. Um, we always have great music and great ways to play, but they're always changing and shifting. So you can't say it's this, 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 or this. So what was it? Well, I, I, put, that, I put that request out to the universe. I said, universe? I had a toe-to-toe -to -toe with the universe. Universe, tell me what it is. Now, before I tell you what it is, because I'm going to tell you what it is, before I tell you what it is, we're going to talk about Cindy Clay. <laughs> because Cindy Clay was so brave, she was up here yet last week. And she was, you know, what, what can she accept? What should she want to accept? And she wants to have these good conversations, which is a way of saying, if I could have good conversations, I'd get what I really want. Now, this is the lesson. What she really wanted is more profit for her company, right? That's, so then she was willing to accept more profit. So what was it on Wednesday? Tuesday or Wednesday last week while we were at CBEC? Leo gets this email and he shows it to me and so I'm texting Cindy, hi, let me get a reject here. She got what will be probably a huge sale by a company that will pay. And it all showed up right after she said, I want huge profits. So just, I want you to know you can ask for anything and the universe will respond. Now she still has to follow through and have those good conversations, but it kind of came out of nowhere. So this is, God's good. So out of nowhere, I got my answer. And what I want to say this is that you can ask for this huge stuff and you can ask for just, I need an answer. For instance, I was grill, going crazy trying to think of what one of my husbands wanted to be once. I know, I know it's crazy. This is, it'll all make sense eventually. Because I am going to tell you what makes CBEC so great. But probably the reason that I could ask and know that I was going to receive is that I had had this conversation with someone and saying, you know, my husband wanted to be a something something. He took dance, then he got an MBA, and he wanted to be a, I uh, can't remember, uh, I couldn't think of the word. And I found, <laughs> finally it occurred to me, he, was an imp he wanted to be an impresario, which is someone who, who um, manages and produces operas and other musicals. That's what my, one of my husbands, one of them, wanted to be full range of experiences. <laughs> but, the re so I knew that if I asked, the information would show up. And yesterday I was asking, what is it, God? What is it? And it showed up this morning in my email. What Seebeck has is something that Denmark has. Now, to back up a little bit, Denmark has been, according to the UN and the UN studies, the happiest country in the world 40 years straight. Now, that's kind of a nice reputation, isn't it? And so people are studying Denmark and trying to figure out what's going on with Denmark. Why do they have such happiness? which is sort of what we have at CBEC. Because people have ups and downs, but there's this sort of underlying, hmm, where everything's just, hmm, it's good. And so the ups and downs just sort of ride the hum of contentment and happiness and okayness with lifeness. I'm making this up as I go. <laughs> okayness with lifeness, that is. 
So people have been studying what's going on with Denmark, and some people have attributed it to being socialistic, yet there's other socialist countries that don't, aren't that happy. And some say it's genetic, which is like, r really genetic? Like you get a happy gene? <laughs> so if you're not Danish, sorry. <laughs> and if you are Danish, we expect a lot out of you. <laughs> so it's probably not genetic. The Danish people think that it's something called yuga. Yuga. I, I was actually coached in this by Jennifer Hanna. Thank you very much. The exact or more, the, the most exact definition of yuga is, is um, coziness. But what they describe, the longer definition of this word is, to enjoy the good things in life in warm and friendly atmospheres. To enjoy the good things in life in warm and friendly atmosphere. <laughs> I was so lucky after first service, a gentleman was here for the first time and he says, I'm Danish. And you're right. <laughs> Not only are you right, but we just got back from three weeks in Denmark. And it's true. People are happy. And my daughter, who didn't really care about her Danish heritage, is now all over it. And now she wants to sit and have family meals. Because there, they do things, but they really savor the things that they're doing, and they do it in the company of other people who are saving it with them. So they will plan dinners, and it's not just fly-as-you-go dinners. It's we sit down, and we have candlelight, and we enjoy each other's company. We drink hot cocoa, and we enjoy it. We, we do things, and we savor the moment, and therefore they are happy which is what's happening at Seabeck. At Seabeck, there are a group of people, and you know who you are, who made rocking in a rocking chair an Olympic event. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you, oh yeah. I mean, they just were amazing. And then they would collect other people around them and they'd rock, it was great. It was wonderful. The sitting on the lawn, gazing, gazing up at the clouds and the mountains, or going out at night and looking at the stars and enjoying it, not by themselves, but in the company of others. So now you have a remedy for what I think plagues a lot of us, which is angst. How many of you know what angst is? And the other side of angst is contentment and happiness. So do something you love and ask somebody that you love to do it with you. And what if we did that more often? And we had Seebeck all year. It's my new intention. It's that Seebeck feeling all year. That wasn't my talk, <laughs> at least not what I had planned. But when everything showed up, I was just so amazed, like, oh, that's it, that's it. I'll have to say that. Now, I want to go on to what I really wanted to talk about, which is um, my work with some groups while I was at Seabeck. And every time I work with a group, I consider it a petri dish, a small sampling of the bigger culture, and how to shift that small sampling of the bigger culture. And I learned a few things. I learned that. Uh, we need to be specific. I'm pointing at, at, um, at Cindy Clay right now. And that we can pray for everything big and small. So we can crawl, pray for profit and more sales and we can pray to understand. We can pray for... Um, we can pray for resolution. Resolution of stuff that seems to be going on all directions. And to have something bring it all together and, and, and bring it into completion. Uh, we can pray for that and uh, we can pray to be inspired about what to get our secret angel. Big and small, it doesn't really matter. Spirit doesn't really care what the desire of our heart is. 
It cares that we know what our heart wants so that it can pour itself into us in a, in a way that will fulfill that desire. For it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Are we willing to receive? Are we willing to accept? Are we willing to um, speak what we want out loud? So what I thought I would do is, is bring you a bit of my experience of CBEC by, um, by having us do a few things that we did in our evening, um, I don't know what it was. It wasn't quite a prayer service and it wasn't really a meditation, but we, a bunch of us would get together in the evening at 9.30 and, and just create some spiritual practices together and, and go to bed on that. Instead of going to bed on, how many of you go to bed on something else? Like, like the news, that's the last thing, or a book, or whatever. But to go to bed right after spiritual practice is a really rich way to, to um, move into dreamland. Now, I'm going to suggest some things, and then I I'm going to suggest that you do them all the time. It'll be sort of like uh, Mae McCarthy's book, uh, on the path to wealth, that you get together you, with your CSO, chief spiritual officer, every day. And, but, but that can sometimes be interpreted like, what's the big thing I'm working on? How many of you have a big thing you're working on? Sometimes that'll take a while. But even while I'm going forward on the big thing I'm working on, I want something every day. So I call these kinds of prayers my m manna prayers, like he manna from heaven. And in the Bible, the manna showed up to feed the children of Israel, but it was always just enough for that day. They got just what they needed for that day. And every day, there's something that I need for that day. Am I willing to accept what I need for that day while I'm letting a bunch of other great things happen through me? For instance, there are some things that took a while, probably because I had to shift my consciousness a lot, but I want to be friends with my sisters. I'm really good friends with my sisters now. Um, I've wanted to have time be my friend instead of my enemy, and time is my friend now. If I need to do a lot of things, somehow time expands and I get all those things done. It's like amazing. It's a miracle. Every time it happens, it's like a miracle. But that's my new expectation. That's my new normal. But it took a while to get there. In the meantime, I live day to day, and I want, all, I, I want other things. Like I want to be directed in this or directed in that or... Um, uh, I want to be more patient with people. Uh, <laughs> or, or just get me home in time. Uh, you know, let the traffic part. There's just things that I really want. And I can ask for the larger things and the smaller things. And, and doing that keeps me in the flow. It's, it's not just from big issue to big issue. That's enlightenment by crisis. Heaven is letting, letting the universe support us in everything, everything that's up for us. So we're going to do two practices. But the first involves you becoming very clear. The last night that that I was um, working with that group. I, I mean, the group that would come together for our evening meditation slash, I'm not sure what it was, but it was really great. It was fun. I asked for prayer requests. But instead of just having people throw out prayer requests, first I had them become very still and listen to what the universe wanted them to accept. Because if we accept a thing, it may handle everything else. If we accept a new reality, we start to become the person that no longer has the issues that we're trying to overcome. Is this making sense? So instead of praying so much to fix or to acquire or to gain or get rid of, how many of you have done that? Aren't you good at it? It might be simpler to just accept a new definition of yourself a new reality for yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is let ourselves do that. So if you choose, 
If you choose, I invite you to just relax. <sighs> Become aware of your chair, whatever you're sitting on. For me, it's the stage. <sighs> Breathe deeply. And turn your attention to something greater than yourself. You can call it anything you want because I doubt that it cares what you call it. In all of the different spiritual traditions in the world, they call that thing that is greater than themselves something. And it's all, there's so many different names. I doubt that there's the one name. Most likely it is that which is beyond names. But what will you call it? You can call it spirit or truth, God, the universe, your higher self, your true self. You can call it truth. You can give it a name like Jesus, Mary, Krishna, Allah. But turn your attention to that. That which is a part of you and yet beyond you. Just as we can be a part of life and yet there's so much of life that is beyond us. Now ask, what is it that I need to accept right now? What is it that the universe, God, spirit, wants me to accept especially about myself, what am I to accept? Now take that acceptance and condense it down into one word, maybe two words. What is it that you are called to accept? First service we had divine support. We had abundance patience. What word comes to mind? What are you supposed to accept? Because in doing so, in accepting that aspect within yourself, that quality within yourself, things just seem to get handled. And I'll come back to the room. And we're going to form a prayer out of those things. So who would like to share what they got, especially if it was what you didn't expect? Colt, say it out loud. Magnificence, okay. How many of you would like to accept your own magnificence? And wouldn't that feel good? Wouldn't it handle a few things? All right, what else? Who else besides Colt had a something come to them? J Jillian, okay, I'm going to have people come up. What, what was yours? Greatest good. Grace? Greatest good. Graced good. Yes. Greatest. greatest good. So you want not just good, but greatest good. Greatest good, magnificence, and? Oneness and connectedness. So you want to feel your connection with everything. Ah, who would like to feel connected? <laughs> That would, how many of you, if you really felt connected, would solve a whole lot of problems? Okay, connected, oneness, greatest good. How many of you would like more good? We should have some hands. Okay, PJ? Health. Who would like more health? Wellness, the sense of wellness in your body. See, what I love is that when you, when you name something, you're actually... There's something called morphogenic fields, which we won't get into, but you actually move into a field with other people who want the same thing. And in accepting it, you actually make it easier for other people to accept that thing in that morphogenic field, which is uh, Google Rupert Sheldrake, and if you really want to know. All right, so, all right, one more. If I can, I've got to make sure I can remember all this. Be here now. And what would that do for you? would be alive and present. 
How about we? How about you want to be present? Yes, please present. Okay, so we're going to try to remember all of this. We want some presence, some greater good, connectedness, unity and connectedness, health, and magnificence. Oof. Anybody want to abstain from all of those? <laughs> because this prayer might get all over you. Is it is okay? <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you. For everybody that was brave and shared, thank you. Because you spoke what someone else would love to have also. So we're going to have Joel at the, at the piano, but before we do that, we're going to do the other thing. Before we pray, we're going to do the other thing that this group did, which is to sort of get us in the, uh, in the vibration of this greater life that wants to give to us. Ernest Holmes, and he was so good, and if you want to know more about this, take Beyond Limits. Just commercial time. Ernest Holmes said it wasn't so much what we prayed about or, what we pr or who we prayed or what we prayed to. What really counts is where we pray from because we don't change the universe. We don't change God. We don't change spirit. We change ourselves to be ex accepting. And one of the things that can happen is that we feel like something is out there and it's good, but how are we going to get it, Realize, not realizing that we're already one with it? So as long as we think we are separate from this greater good, then we can't, um, we can't, we, we will always be a little bit of a beggar and a beseecher. How many of you have let that sneak in sometimes? It's okay because you can be healed by truth. Who's, who's let themselves beg and beseech? Truth heals. Hafiz said this, just sit there. Just sit there right now and don't do a thing. Just rest. For your separation from God is the hardest work in all the world. It takes a lot of energy to continue, continue the illusion that we are separate from life and therefore separate from our good and the blessings that we desire. So what we're going to do now is help us raise our vibration so that we can accept the good that we'll be praying for, okay? So we're do this. We, we, we will do now, we, what we're going to do now is the official religious science chant. And for those of you that didn't know we had a chant, we have a chant. We're, we're, we're a big church now, and we've got a chant. <laughs> so if you don't know it, you will. Very quickly, about the second time round, you'll know the chant. So let's go. We're going to do it 10 times. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is my life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is now life now. Whisper, there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And so we move into the awareness of that life and that there is only one life. And so therefore that life must live us and everyone around us. It lives this planet. It lives the rocks. 
lives. It lives the sky. It lives the inhabitants of the sea and the, and the birds that fly over the mountains. It, it is all that is, and all that it is is perfect, which means whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing wrong. And so I give thanks that the desires of our heart, each and every desire of our heart, is beautiful and blessed because it asks us to receive a little more of that perfection, to move a little bit more into that awareness, to live a little bit more of the truth of who we are. And so I give thanks that each and every one of us, if we do choose, if we say yes, we are accepting our own spiritual magnificence. Breathe that in. For if life is magnificent, then so too are we. And life is magnificent. It is so intricately, beautifully, complicatedly, elegantly, perfect and magnificent. Magnificent is, just is. It's not what we do, it's not our past, it's not our future. It's not even our potential. It just is who we are. Let us breathe that in. And so as we breathe in that deep, deep realization of our own internal magnificence because of being an expression of God's life, I give thanks that we also breathe into ourselves the willingness to have a greater good for what we have is a beautiful good. It's a good, good, good. No matter where we are, no matter what we've been going through, there is a good for us and we ought to have it. And I give thanks that we are allowing ourselves to have even greater good. More love, more life, more health, more joy, more peace, more happiness. I give thanks that as we allow that sense of greater good to happen, we're also allowing ourselves to have a greater sense of bodily health well-being, vitality, energy, flexibility, functioning of all things because there is a spiritual prototype that wants to be lived through us and it is magnificent and we accept that now. Breathe that in. Hmm. I give thanks that all the desires of our heart, all of them, are now being met by the fullness of life. So speak your own internal desire. And the Spirit of God says, are you willing to accept this? And if you say yes, You open up a way through which life can more fully flow through you and me and all creation. So I speak my word that our minds, our hearts, our consciousness is opening wide for the goodness of life to move through us, the abundance of life to move through us, the wholeness of life to move through us, manifesting in a myriad of ways. Thank you, sweet spirit, for this day, for this community, for the opportunity to pray together how good it is. And so it is.